With us in studio is Saad Mohseni. He's the director of the Mobi Group, the largest media company in Afghanistan. Saad, thank you for being with us this morning. How concerned are you watching these images that we've just seen? I'm deeply concerned uh, and have been for some months. But the, 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 how quickly this is unraveling is, uh, is a thing that, and you know, we have no control um, in terms of uh, managing the crises, uh, what to do with our journalists, what to do with our operations. Um, so it's, uh, it's the sort of stuff that uh, keeps us up and has uh, done so for, for the last few nights. Why do you think the situation is unraveling so quickly? Well, I think it's a combination of things. I mean, first and foremost, and I think we have to always look within, we have a pretty inept, uh, hopeless government that has not managed this transition. Um, but also the Americans uh, have completely have failed their Afghan partners. The way that this transition was managed, um, the fact that the Americans decided to leave and left within three months, or basically will leave within three or four months, and not uh, handing over to the Afghans the things that are necessary for the Afghans to keep up the fight. For example, the servicing and maintenance of aircraft, planning for the war, mm. training, logistics. Uh, they're pretty much, you know, it's in effect, uh, they've ha tied the Afghans' hands behind their backs and have said, go and keep fighting. So it's a combination of factors. You mentioned journalists. You actually launched your own media company after the Taliban were originally removed from power in 2001. How concerned are you about the situation of the, or the ability rather, of journalists and media to work with the Taliban seizing power in so many places at the moment? I, I doubt that they could work within, uh, uh, with the Taliban in charge. I mean, we've seen right across the country in, how, in terms of how they're treating journalists, media operations, and the signs are not good. I mean, I think what we need to point out is Taliban 2.0 is exactly the same as the earlier version. They have not changed. Not when it comes to women, not when it comes to media, not when it comes to civil society. You've seen these people on your, on your screens. I mean, they, they do not look like a civilized, um, disciplined group of uh, individuals. So that means all the gains that have been made for women's and, women and girls, they will be rolled back? But, but, well, more, more than likely, yes. What does that mean for women and girls living in the areas that the Taliban has seized? Well, they will live like they did in the 1990s. Women will not be able to go out without a male companion. Girls will not be allowed to go to school. They will not be allowed to work. They will not be allowed to even go to a clinic unless they're accompanied by a, by a male relative. And I'm not even sure that in, 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 in clinics, for example, or schools that women can teach and because there'll be no female teachers and, and doctors, a lot of women will not be able to even get basic uh, uh, medical uh, help. Uh, so it's, it's of deep concern to us. I'm not sure if it's really, the, the, you know, the, the penny has dropped in a lot of Western uh, countries, and particularly in Germany. Well, you mentioned Germany. You are here today to speak to German government officials about the situation in Afghanistan. What are you going to tell them? What I'm going to say is that you're going to, you know, the consequences will be felt in places as far as Germany, with refugees. For example, they expect one and a half to two million uh, um, Afghans to leave Afghanistan in 2021. That's an estimate, but that could, it could be a lot higher. Um, where will they go? They'll come to Europe, they'll go attempt to get to the US, um, they'll flee to regional countries like Iran and Pakistan. We will have a massive problem in terms of drugs because it will be a free-for-all in terms of production and uh, smuggling of drugs to places like Europe. And of course, terrorism will continue to remain, remain a challenge for, for all. Um, you're seeing all these different groups now uh, coming back to Afghanistan, whether it's Al-Qaeda or ISIS or a lot of smaller regional groups, uh, terrorist organizations. So I think it, it's something that, you know, you'll feel the, con you know, you will see the consequences in the months ahead. So what should the international community do? I think the international community, it, it has to be a carrot and stick approach. They have to, A, remain very engaged in, in Afghanistan. They have to make it very clear to this new government that will emerge eventually that, uh, that well, at least they should try that uh, the gains of the last two decades are not reversed or rolled back. And I think the, the sticks are that sanctioning individuals within the Taliban, sanctioning people who support the Taliban, including people in the Pakistani military and government. Um, but, but I think engaging is very important, not to, to, you know, with the embassy shutting down and the airport perhaps closing down, it's going to be easy just to forget about Afghanistan. Engaging is very important and remaining engaged. Thank you for sharing that message with us today, Saad Mosani, director of the Mobi Group with us.
Thank you. Thank you.